Between the years 1911 and 1924, San Pedro Poveda created student academies in 12 cities of Spain. By 1936, the year of his death, he had created 22. Maria Dolores Gomez Molleda is a historian from the University of Salamanca in Spain, and she has done serious studies about Poveda. She considers that his initiative of the academies of San Teresa which he set up in key places of the Spanish geography, are an example of what he calls his prophetic intuition at responding to the needs of the times. Prophetic, she explains, because he chose to rely on protagonists that the church or society had never considered before. He busca unos apoyos absolutamente inéditos para para hacer, para realizar su proyecto, se apoya nada menos que la figura del seglar contemporáneo. Piensa que los seglares, los seglares pueden desempeñar en, las, en la iglesia y en la sociedad un papel único y que es el momento de, 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 de desarrollar ese papel. Es que además se apoya en seglares mujeres, en mujeres seglares mejor dicho, Pero ¿qué era la mujer en tiempo de Don Pedro? La mujer era una figura absolutamente anodina y borrosa detrás del hombre, todos lo sabemos. En cuanto a saber, poquito. En cuanto a vivir, poquito. En cuanto a figurar, poquito. Fijaos que estamos a 50 años del Vaticano, ¿eh? del Vaticano. Y sin embargo, Don Pedro piensa que son una fuerza que hay que potenciar. Si hasta entonces la Iglesia era como una fortaleza que se defendía de los ataques de la sociedad. Don Pedro decide que hay que salir de esa fortaleza y que hay que ir a la sociedad civil, no quedarse en reductos privados de escuela o de partido o de grupito, sino que hay que dar la batalla, dice él, allí donde nos cita. Estoy refiriéndome a, a, ese, a esta idea del padre de... de de penetración, de, de fundirse con la gente, de ser sal. With the passage of time, the academies began by Poveda became the educational centers of today in Europe, the schools, university residences, colegios mayores, and the socio-educational projects for non-formal education. The expansion of this educational movement was taking place not only in Spain, it extended to America in 1928, to Europe in the 30s and 50s. It reached Africa in the 40s and Asia in the 50s. For historical reasons, Spain is the country where the larger number of members live and work. One can find members of the association in all the provinces of Spain. The cooperative works include six university residences, six colegios mayores, 22 schools, and 33 socio-educational projects in rural and urban areas. There is a pedagogical bookstore, the NGO Interred, and a critica magazine, which constitutes a tradition began with the first news bulletin of the TA, began in 1913. Since 1969, the Instituto de Estudios Pedagógicos Somosaguas, known as IEPS, has fostered educational renewal in Spain and even beyond its borders. The Castro Verda Foundation, through its Covadonga project, carried out in the year of 2001 a three-year program of renewal and updating of all the schools owned by the Dresden Association in Spain. In the year 2000, the TA created the Pedro Poveda Chair through the agreements between the Pontifical University of Salamanca, UPSA, and the Dresden Association. Its purpose is to promote the study of Pedro Poveda and of his writings, as well as research, teaching and knowledge of two topics that center a great part of his energies, priestly ministry and dialogue between faith and modern culture. In 2010, the TA has created the chair of Josefa Segovia, Mysticism and Lay Spirituality, 
in the CITES, University of Mysticism of the Carmelite Friars in Avila, Spain. The Derision Association arrived in Italy in 1934, when Pedro Poveda was still alive. From its early years, it began incorporating young professionals from the field of education, medicine and the arts, working in state schools and at the university level. Corporatively, the members run a university residence in Rome and another one in Perugia. In Bescovillo, close to the Marian Shrine, they have a center for spirituality. In Milan, they run a pedagogical center, Poveda. In Rosano, the volunteer program in Sieme. And in Ferrara, a scuola materna. They are also present in Palermo. The presence of the Teresian Association began in Portugal in 1945. The members are educators in state schools and other in other professions. They live in Lisboa, Coimbra and Porto. They run cultural activities and they also run programs to support immigrants. In 1947, Josefa Segovia, then first president of the Treason Association, sent a group of members to London to study English and Mandarin in order to prepare their future mission in China. But the bamboo curtain became a reality in 1949 and China was closed off to the outside world. Plans had to be changed, and some in the group remained in England, thus beginning the TA presence in London. Soon, they opened a Phoenician school, which for almost 50 years has received foreign students eager to learn the English language. It is not currently open. Already in 1928, with Pedro Poveda still alive, 40 members of the Teresian Association were sent in the month of June to be part of an evangelizing project of catechesis in the French cities of Lyon, Grenoble, Montpellier and Nîmes. But it was not until 1953 that the former presence of the Teresian Association was established in France. Some professional Catholic women joined the association in the following years. They have established a university residence in Paris and they have established an open space for cultural events and pastoral activities. The first members of the Dresden Association arrived in Germany in 1955. Other German Catholics have joined the association since. And besides the exercise of their profession as educators at various universities, corporatively they run the university residence Theresianum. The Cardinal Archbishop of Munich, Joseph Ratinger, Pope Benedict XVI visited the residence in 1980. He not only spoke to the members of the TA, he also personally greeted each of the student residents at the time. The arrival of the first TA members in Belgium in 1957 had a very specific objective. They would teach Spanish to the priests being prepared for mission experience in Latin American countries. During years, they also run a university residence, now closed. Presently, they have a center called Alameda, where they gather collaborators, friends and families for mutual support, cultural activities, and to deepen into spirituality. The presence of the association in Ireland began in 1960 with a university residence. Several Catholic women joined the association in the earlier years. In 1965, the university residence was turned into a Catholic school, first with the elementary grades and now including all levels up to the university. The Teresian School has received numerous awards for its excellent education. It runs a summer volunteer program in Peru with the participation of students who travel to the area of Villa El Salvador outside of Lima as a way of supporting their efforts to improve the quality of life. Several generations of alumni have now joined the Alumni Association of the school as a way to reaffirm the values they once learned and as an opportunity to continue supporting the school's mission. A black and white photograph kept in the historical archives of the Teresian Association marks the moment when the initiative begun by San Pedro Poveda is about to expand beyond Spain and into a new continent. The photograph was taken in 1928, when Pedro Poveda and José de Segovia traveled to Cádiz, in southern Spain, in order to say goodbye to Ángeles Obrón, Carmen Fernández Ortiga, and Jacoba Sanz, 
who were about to embark towards Chile in the ship Reina Victoria of the Spanish Transatlantic Company. Their mission would be to take charge of the normal school Santa Teresa in Santiago de Chile, thus beginning the presence of the association in America. The seed of this initiative had been planted by Carmen Cuesta in 1926. It was then that she traveled to several countries in the continent as part of an expedition organized by the Spanish Catholic Action as a gesture of closer Hispanic-American relationships. She visited Uruguay, Argentina and Chile and she made contact with Adela Edwards and her normal school Santa Teresa. It was the same educational center that two years later would be the first mission field of the Tunisian Association in the American continent. Twenty years after the black and white photo had been taken aboard the ship in the Cadiz harbor, Josefa Segovia was beginning a trip to the continent, but she traveled in an airplane. It was 1949, and her trip lasted almost six months. She visited the countries where the Tunisian Association was present through 20 educational centers in Chile, Argentina, Uruguay, Bolivia, and Peru. During the next decades, the mission of the TA in America continued to expand. After Chile, in the 30s, it reached Argentina and Uruguay. In the 40s, it was Bolivia and Peru. In the 50s, Mexico, Brazil, Venezuela, Dominican Republic, and the United States. It reached Colombia in the 1961. In Guatemala, 10 years later. In Guatemala, we are in the city capital with a very interesting project with a lot of capacity of development in the population of Chile. The Institute of Teresian has been in Mexico since the 50s and we have worked in different fields of education. In León, Guanajuato, Hay dos centros, uno es el Centro de Derechos Humanos, poniendo un énfasis especial en los derechos de las mujeres. Y en coordinación con este centro tenemos un, un centro de educación primaria. Vamos a empezar con secundaria. By 2010, the Tourism Association in America has extended its presence to universities, private and state educational centers, to the field of health and socio-educational projects. Some of its members collaborate in pastoral initiatives of the church in local communities. Corporatively, the Tourism Association directs 14 educational centers, 16 social projects, and four university residences. Based in Brazil, the NGO Nueva America organizes workshops and publishes the magazine of the same name, as well as books and pamphlets in the field of education and human rights. In the Dominican Republic, the Poveda Cultural Center supports the educational updating of state teachers involved in transformational educational processes. The center has developed a program for the improvement of the educational quality in Dominican Republic through the formation of the teachers in the public system. This program is funded by the NGO Interred and the Junta de Comunidades de Castilla-La Mancha. It is a program being implemented in two areas of the country with different objectives. All the projects and initiatives of the GA in the continent, as well as the professional performance of members, follow the inspiration of a socio-educational proposal known by the name to educate in difficult times. This proposal articulates the pedagogical ideas of Pedro Poveda as applied to today. The social educational movement is also growing at the continental level as a way of joining and inspiring people in other professions who want to offer to society a transforming and humanizing witness. This wide movement has already gathered groups in various countries, including the United States, where the GA members carry out educational and pastoral activities and have two social educational projects in Chicago and Miami. The GA presence in Miami had begun in the 60s of the 20th century, responding to a request from the local bishop in order to attend to thousands of Cubans fleeing the island after the Castro Revolution. During 23 years since 1986, direct contacts were made visiting Cuba, and in 1909, the Bishop of Holguin offered the GA the possibility of collaborating in the formation of the laity 
initially with workshops for educators, communicators, and theology for the laity. Local Catholics have joined the TA and are making present in Cuba the charism of Pedro Poveda. During the 60s and 70s of the 20th century, TA members from the sector of France made the TA present in Canada. In the 90s, Filipino members from the U.S. delegation working in Canada began contacting alumni and ASID members who had emigrated to that country. The group has grown and the charism of Poveda is taking root in Canada with the support of the TA from the United States. 67 years have passed since the Division Association arrived in Bolivia. Its members direct two educational centers in the capital, La Paz, and one in Santa Cruz. And they also run a university residence in Cochabamba. To support the high percentage of the indigenous population, we have created socio-educational projects in La Paz, Santa Cruz, Cochabamba, and in the district of Titicachi, San Alfonso de las Muñecas. The project of Titicachi has been selected to receive a special support from the TA as a solidarity gesture in 2011, first centennial anniversary of the beginnings of the Tunisian Association. The Tunisian Association arrived in Uruguay in 1939. It has created a university residence in the capital, Montevideo. Its educational centers were created in 1960 and they are committed to promoting quality education and much hope. Dios cuenta con estas manos. Living the vision and charism of Father Poveda, a vision that gave the lady a mode of life very much inserted in the structures of this world, living the gospel and transforming it from within. Concha Banag is one of the first members of the Jerusalem Association in the Philippines. In the 50s, she met the TA in Spain during her years as a student in Madrid. Upon returning to Manila, she joined the association whose first members had already arrived in Manila and were working in universities in local schools. Ten years later, in 1960, the TA opened its first school in 1974, the school changed name to Poveda Learning Center, and after the canonization of the founder in 2003, with the expansion into tertiary education, the name of the school was changed to San Pedro Poveda College. It currently has a student body of 2,000 students, and it prides itself with several generations of alumni already contributing to the transformation of society in the Philippines. Over 250 native members have joined the TA. Some have contributed to the expansion into other Asian countries, and 45 of them are leading the mission in other parts of the world. The TA is now present in the three main groups of islands that form the country, Luzon in the north, Visayas in the center, and Mindanao in the southern part. Some of the corporate works of the TA in the Philippines include San Pedro Poveda College, three university residents in the main islands in Manila, Iloilo and Cagayan de Oro, two centers of spirituality and culture, the Poveda House of Prayer in Tagaytay and the Covadonga Center of Culture and Spirituality in Cagayan de Oro in Mindanao. The TA in the Philippines has also created foundations that support different aspects of the TA mission. The Josefa Segovia Foundation, based in Davao, Mindanao, supports marginalized farmers in tribal communities. It operates an alternative marketing center called Almacen. The Jerusalem Association arrived in Jerusalem in 1952. Josefa Segovia very much desired a permanent presence of the association close to the place where redemption had taken place. The TA has remained in Jerusalem and has extended its presence to Bethlehem and to Amman, Jordan, 
where they ran the Pontifical Mission Library for the Palestinians that live in the city. In Bethlehem, the members of the TA work at the Catholic University and also ran the Pontifical Mission Library for Palestinians. They organize cultural and educational activities for young people, Muslim as well as Christian. Every year, more and more participants attend the YES summer camps for youth held in Bethlehem that also incorporate the parents. It was 1959 when the first TA members arrived in Japan. They are present in Nagoya and Tokyo, and they work at the university and as teachers in local schools. In 2009, they celebrated 50 years of present. It was an opportunity for friends, alumni, and colleagues from the university to join them and to greet many of their past teachers who had traveled from afar for the celebration. The first TA members arrived in Taiwan from the Philippines in 1963. Besides their professional involvement at the university, they have collaborated with church in various activities, and they have created two centers to facilitate the encounters and the meetings. The Poeta Center in Taipei in the north, and the TA Activity Center in Tainan in the south. They have organized a group of Poeta friends for sharing, increasing, updating, and mutual support in the faith. An international volunteer group through which students from Taiwan visit the Philippines and grow in sensitivity to other realities. They have an international student group formed for Catholic foreign students who came to Taiwan as scholars. They gather people from India, Vietnam, Indonesia, and Latin America. There is also a, a youth movement and English classes to empower migrant workers so they get a better employment. The Dresden Association arrived in India in 1973. Since then, native Catholics have joined the original group. The TA presence has extended to Gujarat in the north, Mumbai, Pune, and Honavar in the region of Shantinagar where the first church, named after Pedro Poveda, was built. In Honavar, they have created the Sarpi Project, Society for the Advancement of Rural People in India, which has several socio-educational components, among them a two-year course for women animators in the village, a hostel for students, a preschool, special school, and a library. Lately, they have begun making kurtas, Indian blouses. The proceeds of the sales support the projects. In my regions, we have a, a lot of Catholics because of the greater population that we have in India. And the Catholics are uh, being empowered a lot by the church now, which is uh, empowering them with a lot of formation. We have the basic Christian community for which the Theresian Association is also quite uh, involved. And we also have uh, a lot of programs for the youth, for the community. Since the arrival of the Theresian Association in the African continent in 1941, a significant number of African Catholics have joined the TA mission. They are present with activities in Equatorial Guinea, the Democratic Republic of Congo. When Pedro Poveda empezó, en 1911 era así una cosa pequeñita en, el, en, el, en el, aquel España, pero ahora está en 30 países. Para nosotros es muy importante poder ahora ver cómo eh, desplegar nuestra vocación, cómo eh, hacer entender a, las, a la otra persona el carisma nuestro y vivir nuestra vocación a tope. Y, Poder comunicar la alegría de la vocación a un laico en el mundo. The TA presence in Equatorial Guinea began in 1941. It was then that Luis Aguero, Cristina Pascual, and other TA members began working in Bata, the continental area then known as Rio Muni. They also reached out to the island of Bioko, then known as Fernando Po, and in the capital, Malabo, they established primary schools. In 1969, Equatorial Guinea obtained independence from Spain and suffered a wave of repression under the dictator 
Francisco Macias. TA members not from Guinea had to leave the country in a hurry. Ten years later, in 1979, some TA associates from Spain returned to the country as teachers from the Spanish Education Ministry. Maria Dolores Moreno, Ángeles Ruiz, Rea, and Josefina Corvillo settled in Malabo. Since then, other African Catholics have joined in the mission and are involved in social change through their profession, mostly in education, in the field of health, and participating in the political process. In Malabo, the Tunisian Association runs the school Virgen Maria de Africa and the Poveda Center for the Formation of Teachers. They have created the Castro Verde Medical Laboratory that offers affordable and reliable clinical tests to the population. They also collaborate in pastoral initiatives of the local church. Paul Marsan is a TM member in Guinea and is well acquainted with recent events in the country. He studied aeronautic engineering in Madrid, Spain, and held a job at the State Office of General Transport and Civic Aviation. His children attended the school of the TA in Malabo, and he would every day take them and pick them up from school. The TA members invited him to attend some cultural activities. It was then that I began my formation to become a member of the Tunisian Association, and I discovered what I continue to like, that in the TA, nobody is asked to put on a uniform. I found that everything was done with simplicity. It was a very normal presence in the midst of the people. At that time, we were distributing water in Campo Yaounde, and the TA was starting its first grade schools. Now I am in the main opposition party. In the reality of Equatorial Guinea, the TA has achieved more than other groups that came with powerful means. The TA charism has shown its strength through weakness. The TA has always been with us. It had to go, but it came back and it remains with us. It has done much in a very short time. Our group is formed by the adults, the young people and children. And all of us share in an experience that makes us feel part of a family. If we're grateful, we should offer this possibility to those who will continue. I am sure that everyone would give the best to make it possible that others may live this. This is why I am sure that as we celebrate this centenary, there will be 200 more years. The Tunisian Association arrived in the Democratic Republic of Congo in 1964. In the capital, Kinshasa, the members have created the project Banaya Poveda for children of the streets. They also have set up the Karibuni Library. Some 3,000 miles from the capital in Kitwikt, they have established the Victoria Dia project with various components, the formation of educators, a library open to the public, and the residence for students from the nearby villages. Laurentin Lumbungi is the director of this residence. Necesidad muy urgente ahí en mi país es la formación de las mujeres. Es por eso el empeño que tenemos ahí de tener cuidar muy bien la residencia de las chicas. Cuando terminan ahí sean gente muy importante para la sociedad porque tenemos una un lema que es cambia tú misma y tu entorno va a cambiar contigo. Y en este sentido trabajamos. La enseñanza es una vocación. Y lo vivo ahora con mucha intensidad. Aprende mucho con Pedro Poveda. Con dulzura se educa, con dulzura. Así que esas son palabras que me tocan mucho en el corazón. Y esto de hacer siempre mmm, al día, la cabeza en el momento presente, esto me habla mucho. Mirar la realidad de hoy y poder dar respuesta como lo dio Pedro Poveda en Guadix. Es el esfuerzo que estoy yo haciendo. He encontrado ahí una manera de vivir, de vivir a fondo mi vocación.